folks, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Today's episode, we are going to be talking about the end of the world, the zombie apocalypse by Fantasy Flight Games. Seen here. I'll be very honest with you, and I'll be quite upfront. I went through kind of an emotional roller coaster when I was reading this book because it ha there are several things that were kind of, I had a predisposition against going forward. I'll give you the punchline now. They were all solved, they were all fixed. And it, in the end, is a really, very, very interesting take on how to do not just zombie apocalypses, but apocalypses, I suppose that's the plural of that word, apocalypses for a role-playing game scenario. So diving into this, this is a fantasy flight game book, which I'm actually very excited to see because... Way, way back in the back end, for those of us who've been around for more than a minute, remember Fantasy Flight Games had done had an era where they were putting out some incredibly creative role-playing games. They were responsible for the, the second edition or, the, re, or the, the second life of Blue Planet, which we reviewed quite a while ago, which is probably the most science-y science fiction game I've ever seen that didn't make me want to just go drown myself because it was too overloaded with, with science stuff. I'm very picky when people say, oh, it's hard science, and it's based on science. Really, take a look around me here, ladies and gentlemen. This is my life, I know science. They also did Dawn Forge, which was uh, in the in Wizards of the Coast's competition to create a new setting that Eberron eventually came from. Dawnforge was, it's the beginning of a fantasy era. It's that golden era where everything is great and everything is magic before somebody breaks it and it all sucks. They also did Dragonstar, which was a very good fusion of science fiction and fantasy, if you wanted your D&D in space. Fantasy Flight then sort of shifted out of role-playing games for a little bit. They did a lot of miniatures and war games. They re-entered with the Warhammer series. Honestly, Warhammer and Warhammer 40K are not settings that particularly excite me. I never got into them from a miniatures point of view, so I never really dove headlong into that work. So when the end of the world came around as a separate, its own role-playing game, I was kind of excited and I'm thinking, oh, it's gonna be a return to form for Fantasy Flight games. That's awesome. Then it's a zombie game. And I'll be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, and I understand what I'm about to say is sacrilege to 85% of you out there. Zombies bore the bejesus out of me. I don't care about zombies anymore. I was never really a zombie guy when I was a kid. Zombies just aren't my thing. Not that I'm into the goth, sexy vampire thing either. It's just, eh, I get it, zombies are a metaphor. I get it, zombies are saying something about our society, and they're fun to kill because there's no moral compunction against it, but my first exposure to a zombie role-playing game came from Eden Studios, All Flesh Must Be Eaten in the early 2000s when I discovered it. So, all right, it's a zombie game. It's a zombie game that comes, and I'm going to read this to you, with an elegant narrative rule system to aid you in, aid you in telling your survival story. I can't tell you how many systems I have had that have said, oh, we're elegant, and it's Spycraft 2.0. It's like saying, this is simple. Here, Reed Richards put this together. You can understand it. Okay. Where you play yourself. Oh, boy, folks. I have played in games where you play yourself. It can go very well or it can go really badly. And I will leave it to your imaginations to the sort of auto-masturbatory fantasies that can be carried out in a play yourself game. So automatically going into this, I was sort of, eh, well, okay, whatever. So now let me get over my shit and tell you that this is a really, really good product and all of those bitches that I just had, completely not an issue. This is a translation from an original Spanish game. So I do want to put that in there, that just for clear credit where it's due. This is actually the first of a line of Apocalypse games. It just so happened that the first one that they published is the one that's of the least interest to me. Is that Fantasy Flight's fault? No, it's mine. But the ones that are forthcoming are much more exciting in my opinion. You've got Wrath of the Gods, you've got Rise of the Machines, and Alien Invasion. So there are more coming along these lines. The system itself, 
I like, I've come to think of this system as, a, as if Tristat had a baby with fate and then gave it up and it was raised by Cortex Plus. You've got three basic stats, body, mind, and spirit. And then those can be modified by certain adjectives or subsets. There are sub attributes that come in under those that sort of focus it in, but it really stays locked into those three main attributes. And then the dice pool you generate is a number of white dice and a number of colored dice. I will use red in my example. Whites are the good things that you have going for you. Your attribute number, your any uh, specialties that you have or equipment or anything like that. And the reds are things that are working against you. A bad environment, it's raining, it's dark, you're hurt, etc. And you roll all of those. You take out any red and, and, red, red and white dice that match and if you have any white dice left, then you've succeeded. Any red dice remaining comes through to you in the form of stress. Stress is a three by three matrix, three boxes on three ranks for each attribute. And if you get stressed out, that is you fill up all of your stress boxes, your character is in essence dead, either physically, mentally, or socially. Either literally your heart stops beating, you're insane, or you've given up on humanity and you're in a catatonic state. Okay. One of the clever, more clever things about this though was as you fill up those rows, those become resistance ranks against further damage because you've become inured to it somewhat. You've had the crap beaten out of you. Guess what? A thorn prick isn't going to hurt you anymore. Or you've seen some really bad shit. I mean, I point you to the current season of The Walking Dead about, you know, you're, to the point where you can't tell who's who anymore because they are all been so mentally damaged from the event. In terms of making yourself, it has a fairly nice way of letting you do it and then letting your friends vote on it to call you on your bullshit or not. I guess when we went to HD, I suddenly have bad language. So that works, and it also gives you options if you really don't want to play yourself that you can play as other people. So personally, I don't want to play Kurt Weigel in a zombie survival setting for a couple of reasons. One, let's face it, I'm chubby zombie bait. I can't run. I, can't, I don't have any appreciable fighting skills. If I survive the zombie apocalypse, I'm going to be running the daycare. I'm really good with kids. That, that, that's my job in the post-apocalyptic world. I'm running the daycare. But if you wanted to, you could make other characters. So for example, if I'm going to make a character in this, I'm going to play Joel D. Ford, a heroic guidance high school guidance counselor from Northern Kentucky. And there you go. I can build that character as I want to and proceed in life. If you want to clear out some of your stress track, you take it as traumas, which are essentially aspects from fate. They're the consequences of fate. They stick around longer and can be used against you. You know what, folks? It really is a very simple, easy narrative system that allows you to focus on your storytelling of the end of the world. So, I, you know what? I'm wrong. I was really wrong on that because I'm like, yeah, all right, whatever. It's easy, simple narrative. Dude, that's easy. That's really clean. It's not really granular and it's not overly detailed. So if you're the kind of guy who has to know exactly where the zombie bit you and you're unwilling to come up with your own answer creatively or trust your GM to do so, then this probably is not something that you would like. If you are instead interested in seeing how that plays out in a role-playing situation, it's really quite nice, but it does so without becoming completely the free-form story game type system that we've seen pop up in a lot of places over the recent years. Where this setting really, where this book really shines, in my opinion, are the zombie settings that it gives you. Which, if you're playing along at home, these are similar to the Dead Worlds of Eden Studios' All Flesh Must Be Eaten fame. I'm comparing it a lot to Eden Studios' All Flesh Must Be Eaten. One, because I get a penny every time I say Eden Studios' All Flesh Must Be Eaten. And because, let's face it, that's the big dog on the market. Hi, Outbreak, you're an interesting game. I'm sorry, Eden Studios' All Flesh Must Be Eaten. I'm up to a nickel, is really, that, that's the hallmark for me for zombie survival games. The scenarios themselves purport five different options for how the zombies come about. A couple of them you've seen before, a couple of them are within imagination, and one of them is, oh my god, they went there, which I find to be probably the most creative and interesting. 
I'm gonna go through what these five settings are very briefly and then tell you what's so awesome about the scenarios and, and the, the settings and scenario options that you get with each one. Now, the settings themselves are the Night of the Meteor, which is evil magic dust from a meteor, be it necromantic powder or radioactive isotope that enters into Earth's atmosphere and spreads out, makes the dead rise. And you gotta survive. No room in hell, which is the no damn reason for the zombies rise. You don't know why. You can't point to a virus or a specific eclipse or an event or an invasion or anything like that. It just is. And because it just is and you don't know what controls it, you can't really do anything to try to put it to a stop. Pandemic, which is your rage virus spread. Um, it ends with a whisper, which honestly, it's you're living voodoo zombies and voodoo practitioners have taken over the world by converting people into their mindless living voodoo zombies. W aside from the obligatory, we respect people's religion and we're not saying that all voodoo, hoodoo, santeria, Valdun, Wiccan, whatever, practice practitioners are evil, which while I understand it's there, do we really still have to say that? Do we really have to put that disclaimer at the front of everything? But either way, there you go. I'm, in that case, I'm going to object because it, the, um, the pandemic makes all viruses look bad. Either way, that's really the most creative one there in terms of how the zombies came about. Finally, you have under the skin, which is some parasitic organism that gets into you and drives you to eat flesh, not unlike the fungus that can infect spiders and force them to climb to the top of the tallest tree and then explode so their spores go everywhere. It's really horrific. Google some of those words and you can see what it is. It's creepy as shit. So, beyond just how the zombies came about, they give you sample enemies, adversaries, or opponents, or friendlies that you might run into, some places, but then it gives you a timeline. This is where I knew that I was, in, I was dealing with a game that I hadn't quite seen before. Because one of my problems that I have with a post-apocalyptic game is how do we rebuild? after said apocalypse. And I've read a lot of post-apocalyptic stuff, some of it about rebuilding, some of it not. We tend to dwell on the surviving the apocalypse itself and then everything afterwards, it's like, man, I don't know, we just do. This gives you a timeline for every setting of day one, day two, upward to and including years later. So not only does it give you the apocalypse, it gives you this significant chunk of time later and what the world looks like. Has everything fallen apart? Are there now like random bands of people wandering the earth, doing whatever they want? Did a tech, did a, some sort of like tech empire or guy who can help fight this arise and then became this like all controlling despot? Did that happen? Fascinating reading. And the next words I'm going to use are I do not use lightly. Some of the, some of the projection, projection in this and some of the prognostication about how the world rebuilds or what happens is worthy of Ken Height. And those are not words that I use lightly because I, I like Ken's work. I'm a, I'm a fan. I don't believe that only gold drips out of his word processor. But I really think where he shines beautifully is in these alternate histories where this changes and then here's what happens afterwards. For that, I point you to Day After Ragnarok in both its Fate and Savage Worlds and Hero Games versions. So, you get a timeline, you get ideas for adventures and characters and things to do both before, during, and after the apocalypse with the idea of you're playing yourself. There is some vague mention in the book about how you can play through every one of these sequentially as yourself and every one where, but then that gets into the, well, do I remember what happened before? Was it some sort of shared collective dream or foi a deux or something along those lines or other French words that I don't understand? And the answer to that is I wouldn't do that if I were running this game. I, I wouldn't set it up that way just simply because pick your favorite, pick the one you think would be the most interesting to play. For me, that would be under the skin, the parasitic organism, because I know just enough science, biochemistry to make that dangerous. And that would be the most interesting to play out in my opinion, 
Or if you really like the idea of why did the zombies rise, no damn reason. No reason that you can tell. It just happened. That's for you. I went into this game with a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. The game knocked that chip off, smacked me in the face, and said, hey, take a look at me anyway. And it's a very well-written, well-researched, well-thought-out narrative system that presents you with the ability to play not just in a zombie setting, but you could apply some of these ideas to any other apocalyptic setting you want, or if, like me, zombie is not, zombies aren't really your thing, wait for the Wrath of the Gods, the Alien Invasion, or the Rise of the Machines, and each one of those will have their own ideas, perspectives, their own points of view on an apocalypse, and I certainly hope that it moves forward with this idea of, here's, the, here's what happens, here's the future. For Game Geeks, I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Good day and good gaming.